After crossing the territory of Laos, the waters of the Mekong enter a territory plagued by violence and poverty. The scene of political convulsions, the atrocities of war and terrible genocide, very little now remains of the powerful empire of Cambodia, which for five centuries remained invincible, ruling over a considerable area of Southeast Asia. In the jungles of the north of the country lies hidden the most incredible legacy of the once supreme Khmer Empire. This is Angkor, the city of the sleeping forest, one of the most incredible architectural monuments on earth. However, the origin of Angkor remains veiled in mystery. The texts of the Khmer Empire, which were written on palm leaves and skins, have not survived the harsh conditions of the jungle. The only references we have come from the accounts of Chinese and Indian travelers and the few surviving stone inscriptions. These inscriptions contain constant references to the worship of water. The demographic pressure in Angkor forced them to harvest four crops of rice a year. A Cambodian proverb says that rice is the heart of war. The engineers of the empire designed an enormous complex system of canals, dikes and reservoirs to compensate for the climatic differences and so multiply the crops creating an economic potential which for five centuries allowed one million inhabitants to live and progress. The miracle was that this rational organization of space around the monuments was in perfect harmony with the beliefs, the religious symbolism and the political power. Founded at the start of the ninth century by King Jayavaman II, Angkor was the capital of Cambodia until the 15th century. In 1431, it was sacked by Thai invaders, and for over 400 years, the city remained forgotten, lost in the depths of time. In 1858, the Frenchman Henri Mouot revealed it to the Western world, and two years later, with the French colonization of Indochina, a series of archaeologists began to study and rebuild the city, defying nature and attempting to recover the work of the ancient kings and builders. But with the difficult political and social situation of Cambodia, they were doomed to failure, and once more Angkor was left to be devoured by the jungle. The entrances to the site are guarded by the genies of the heavens, 27 stone giants standing at either side of the road leading to Angkor Wat, the culmination of Khmer art. Balance, harmony, a sense of rhythm, of proportion and perspective, Henry Muot, in his account of his travels through the kingdoms of Siam, Cambodia and Laos, describes it thus. Beyond a wide space cleared of all vegetation stretches an immense colonnade crowned by five towers in the shape of lotus flowers. Against the deep blue of the sky and the intense green of the jungle which serve as the backdrop to this solitude, the line of an architecture which is both elegant and majestic seemed to me the monumental profile of an enormous cemetery, the final resting place of an entire extinct race. The beauty and femininity of the Apsaras, the celestial nymphs and dancers of the universe, accompany the visitor as he walks around Angar Wat. 
But the recent history of Cambodia is very different from the splendor of its past.